The Babe is Here. Magazine article. September 17, 1954. By Mitch P.J. Cunningham IV for Sport and Game magazine. You can hear a pin drop. It's almost a stalemate among several longtime rivals. Can Babe pull it off? She eyes the 18th hole, extends her arm for the downswing, and... It's a hole in one! Babe Didrikson Zaharias, Queen of the Fairway, has triumphed, and the crowd goes wild. Her fans rush forward, and there's confusion and havoc on the greens. There's a poignancy to this win, because Babe, a co-founder of the LPGA, Ladies Professional Golf Association, was diagnosed with cancer at the height of her fame. Doctors said she'd never play again, but they should have known not to bet against this indomitable woman. After mulling it over for about a split second, she figured she wasn't going to let a little thing like a serious illness mar her remarkable athletic career. She had other fish to fry. She made a pact with her husband and manager, former pro wrestler George Zaharias, after undergoing surgery. She swore she'd keep the door ajar to return, and return she did. Friends implored her to slow down. What did she have to prove? But Babe wasn't buying it. She won the Serban Women's Open Tournament less than a year after surgery. As she's been heard to say before a tournament, The Babe's here. Who's coming in second? It seems as if Port Arthur, Texas native Mildred Babe Didrikson has the Midas touch when it comes to athletics. Is there any sport at which she doesn't excel? Her many talents are legendary and practically innumerable. Most agree she's the best woman athlete alive. In fact, in 1949, the Associated Press voted her the greatest female athlete of the half century. And she's won a gaggle of other awards and lifetime achievement honors. No one comes close to this lady with the incredible gifts and gigantic heart of a champion. The narrative of Babe's life reads like something out of a Hollywood movie script, complete with brash dialogue between Babe and whoever tries to get in her way. Born in 1911 to Norwegian immigrants, she displayed exceptional physical prowess at a tender age. She excelled in baseball, swimming, diving, tennis, and bowling. Friends started calling her Babe, as in Babe Ruth, after she hit five home runs in one baseball game. She was an All-American high school basketball player. Then she became a bona fide star at the 1932 Summer Olympics, taking home two gold medals in track and field. Some say she should have won a third for the high jump, but her infamous and illegal style of diving shoulders first over the bar cost her first place. Many would have wilted under the pressure, but Babe never weakened. At this point, she could have rested on her laurels. Any of these accomplishments would have been more than adequate for the average woman, or man, come to think of it. But Babe is no average woman. She was introduced to golf in 1935, and golf has never been the same since. She started winning titles in 1940, continued her unparalleled run, and completed the Grand Slam for women's golf in 1950, winning the U.S. Open, the Title Holders Championship, and the Women's Western Open. We'd be lax if we didn't mention that Babe is working on her autobiography, due out next year. The little girl from Port Arthur has done plenty to advance the ideals of women's sports and win the admiration of millions. Adequate. Adequate. Adequate is an adjective, meaning sufficient. A high school education alone is no longer adequate in today's highly technological job market. Or, troops sent into battle without adequate training may falter in the face of the enemy. Now let's hear you say, adequate. Try the word again. Ajar. Ajar. Ajar may be used as an adjective or adverb, meaning partly open. 
a burglar may gain access to a house through a window that is ajar. And you may bump into a drawer that has been left ajar. Now you try ajar. One more time. Dialogue. Dialogue. Dialogue is a noun, meaning a conversation or an interchange of opinions and ideas. A novelist may be criticized for writing wooden dialogue. Also, an editorial writer may complain that the quality of political dialogue has declined in recent years. Now it's your turn. Say dialogue. And again. Emblem. Emblem. Emblem is a noun, meaning a symbol, sign, or token. The skull and crossbones is an internationally recognized emblem for a poisonous substance. And the wedding ring is an emblem of eternal love and faithfulness. Now you say emblem. Repeat the word. Gigantic. Gigantic. Gigantic is an adjective meaning huge, giant, or immense. The kings of ancient Egypt built gigantic tombs called pyramids. Or, marathon runners often eat gigantic amounts of pasta before beginning a race. Your turn. Say gigantic. Once again, Havoc. Havoc. Havoc is a noun, meaning very great destruction, or great confusion and disorder. A historian might describe the havoc caused by the French Revolution. Also, a power failure may cause havoc in a large city. Now let's hear you say, havoc. Try the word again. Hearth. Hearth. Hearth is a noun, meaning the floor of a fireplace, or the fireplace as a symbol of home and family. It is important to keep the hearth clean so that unwanted fires or smoke conditions do not occur. Or, in many homes today, families gather around the television set rather than around the hearth. Your turn. Say, Hearth. One more time. Implore. Implore. Implore is a verb meaning to beg earnestly for. The family of a missing child may go on television to implore the public to help in their search. And people of many faiths say prayers imploring God's aid or forgiveness. Now let's hear you say, implore. And again. Infamous. Infamous. Infamous is an adjective, meaning very wicked or shameful. Many movies have told the stories of infamous outlaws of the Old West. Or... A burglary at the Watergate Hotel was the beginning of one of the most infamous political scandals in our history. Well, it's your turn now. Say infamous. Once more. Innumerable. Innumerable. Innumerable is an adjective, meaning too many to count. There are innumerable species of insects in the world's rainforests. Or, you may sometimes think that your best friend's personal quirks are innumerable. Now you say innumerable. Once again.
Lax. Lax. Lax is an adjective meaning not strict, lacking discipline, or relaxed. A union leader might complain of lax enforcement of health and safety laws in the workplace. Also, a person may speak in a lax tone of voice. Now you try lax. And again. Mar. Mar. Mar is a verb meaning to spoil, damage, or injure. Loud sirens and car horns may mar the early morning peace and quiet. Or, oil leaking from a damaged tanker may mar plant and animal life for miles around. Now let's hear you say, mar. Try the word again. Misdemeanor. Misdemeanor. Misdemeanor is a noun, meaning a crime less serious than a felony or any minor misbehavior. Judges seldom jail those who plead guilty to a misdemeanor. And a defendant's record of youthful misdemeanors may not be admissible as evidence in a criminal trial. Well, it's your turn now. Say misdemeanor. Once more. Mull. Mull. Mull is a verb meaning to think about, to grind or mix, or to heat and flavor with spices. Before making a decision, it is wise to mull over your options. Also, cloves and other spices are used to mull cider and wine. Now it's your turn. Say mull. And again. Narrative. Narrative. Narrative functions as two parts of speech. It can be a noun, meaning a story or detailed report. Life on the Mississippi is a narrative of Mark Twain's experiences on the Great River. Or, narrative can be used as an adjective that means having the quality of a story. An orchestral composition called a tone poem may have a narrative theme. Now you say, narrative. Try the word again. Overture. Overture. Overture is a noun, meaning an opening move toward negotiation, a proposal, or an introductory section. Locked out workers may have no choice but to wait for an overture from management. Or, a sign in a theater lobby may say, no latecomers will be seated during the overture. Your turn. Say, overture. One more time. Packed. Packed. Packed is a noun, meaning an agreement or treaty. American history is full of examples of pacts made with Native Americans and then broken. And the pact signed at Versailles at the end of World War I has been cited as a cause of World War II. Now you say, packed. Repeat the word. Stalemate. Stalemate. Stalemate functions as two parts of speech. It can be used as a noun, meaning a situation in which further action by either of two opponents is impossible. In chess, a stalemate occurs when each player successfully counters the other's strategy. Or, stalemate can be used as a verb that means to bring to a standstill. Either side in a dispute can stalemate negotiations by refusing to make concessions. Now it's your turn. Say stalemate. Once more.
vindictive 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 is an adjective meaning bearing a grudge or feeling or showing a strong tendency toward revenge people may be shocked by the vindictive tone of a speech also iago in shakespeare's othello is a vindictive villain who plots to destroy anyone he envies now you say vindictive and again wilt 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 is a verb meaning to become limp or drooping or to lose strength and vigor humidity causes straight hair to wilt and curly hair to frizzle or a prolonged period of bad luck may cause a person's spirits to wilt well you know the drill by now say wilt once again assalamu alaikum dear my students they would like to introduce to you unit 11 in vocabulary unit 11 we now classify our words in from 1 to 20 but we are going to study from 1 to 10 then we are going to have another video about the other words from 11 to 20. the first word today it means enough and this sign means it's enough okay the word first word is adequate 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 means enough and it's mainly an adjective meaning enough or satisfactory for a particular purpose the opposite of adequate means insufficient not enough not suitable not okay enough for something the example have we got adequate okay adequate food for 20 guests adequate food for 20 guests um, if you look at the door, you are going to find that it is not completely closed. Okay, a little bit open. This is the word today. Door ajar. The word here means, okay, ajar. Ajar means an adjective or adverb, this part of speech, and it means describe a door that is slightly open. Slightly open. Ajar. Opposite, okay, or antonym is closed tightly. We left the door as we left the door ajar so that we could hear um, what they were saying. Come on, they are spying on them. Ajar means slightly open. Number three from this picture that you see, see two persons are talking with each other. This is called what dialogue. It's called dialogue. It's mainly a noun, this part of speech, and the meaning a conversation which is written for a book or a play or a film. The opposite of dialogue, it is monologue. It's what monologue. Monologue when the actor is talking directly to the audience. The play contains some very snappy and witty dialogue. Act two begins with a short dialogue between father and son. This is um, a very famous one for the Egyptians, and this is the symbol of um, the flag you know, for um, the Egyptians. Okay, this is called emblem. Called what? Emblem or a symbol. Meaning a picture of an object which is used to represent a particular person, group, idea, or what, or a symbol. Uh, synonym, badge, or insignia. Insignia. Okay, badge or what? Insignia. As you see, the red rose is an emblem for love. That's a clear symbol or emblem for this. If you look at this picture, you will find a huge bull, huge one, huge male cow. It's what called gigantic. It's called gigantic it's mainly an adjective meaning huge or giant huge or giant gigantic antonyms means tiny or diminutive tiny means a very small and size the next one the cost has been gigantic the cost has been what gigantic if you look at this picture you're going to find much miss you're going to find much miss when you think about much miss like this it's called what havoc havoc it's what Havoc. It's mainly what noun. You say that havoc, not havoc. Havoc. Okay. Meaning confusion and lack of order, especially causing damage or trouble or destruction. It's like destruction. Okay. Antonym peace and quiet. Peace and quiet. Without fighting, without war, without destruction. Intact. Intact means uh, without any destruction. Okay. Or term. The storm wrecked 
Right means causing havoc in the garden. Great destruction. In the during the, the, the winter and in cold nights, people are using fire, especially in the chimney. When they have something um, like this, they put the wood in this place or the, the area in front of it. This is called what? Hearth. 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 It's a noun meaning the area around the fireplace or the area of floor in front of it. Yani, okay, the area inside is called what? Hearth. The area outside, in, okay, inside, outside uh, the burning place is called also what? Hearth. Um, synonym, it's like chimney corner. This place is called the chimney corner, but not the chimney itself. This is hearth. Uh, a bright fire was burning in, in the hearth. Hearth. Number eight, if you look at this man, he is imploring, he's begging, he's asking, he's requesting. That's okay. Um, so this word today is called implore. Implore is a verb and meaning to ask someone to do or not to do something, but in a very sincere and emotional and determined way. He asks sincerely, eagerly, without stopping. Antonyms, claim or for make um, loud voice. Claim or for means make, making loud voice. Okay. She implored her parents not to send her away to school, not send her away to school. This is uh, the case for most students. They, they don't like and implore there, especially when they are still in KG or maybe grade one and two lower grades, all they implore um, not to go to school. <laughs> this is something common like this. Um, from this picture, you can see a man is looking down and he is vague for us. He's not clear. We don't know. Uh, his identity. Okay, this one is telling today about the word that we have. It's infamous. Infamous. Infamous, infamous means famous for something considered bad. Infamous. Like notarius, we studied this one in unit 10. It's what notarius. It means famous for bad actions, for crimes. Antonyms, the opposite, glorious, splendid, something amazing i guess or famous for okay the list included the infamous george drake it's a criminal a double murder a double murder this time a positive modifying george drake number 10 today i think from this picture you see numerous people countless people that it's hard to count them like the hair the hair is difficult to be counted but this one is called Innumerable. Innumerable. Innumerable, it's an adjective, means countless or too many. Opposite to one, okay, it's what few, okay, and countable one. The project has been delayed by innumerable problems, many problems, okay. This is the lesson for today, words from 1 to 10, that's okay. Um, I wish you start studying them, and inshallah we are going to continue for the rest from 11 to 20 for next time. Thank you.